Okay guys, I'm back out here in my shop and I wanted to uh, go over uh, some things about the uh, Gatton CNC router plans uh, that you can, I guess, call this the, the first video in the, in the series that I'll be doing uh, as I do the build. Uh, but before I get started with the build, I kind of wanted to go over the plans themselves and make sure everybody understands, uh, you know, what they're getting basically. Uh, the plans have a whole bunch of PDF files, all of, you know, this one, and I know I'm a long ways off here, but, uh, you know, this is the main whole completed CNC put together there, and you've got like a master bill of materials here, uh, but then it's also broken down into a lot of the different sub-assemblies. So, uh, you know, as you go to print those PDF files off, and I would suggest you print them off, uh, you know, staple your little sub-assemblies together, uh, you know, stay organized and, and it will help you a lot with this, uh, with this build. Uh, another thing I wanted to go over is, uh, and, I, and I'm going to show a screenshot here in just a second. Uh, but I want to show uh, what you do with the full-scale PDFs. Uh, those, if you just use, now I just used a regular, uh, one of the free downloads, Adobe Acrobat Reader, I guess it's called, it's free, didn't cost anything. Uh, but when you go to print these out, for example, I've got uh, the Z-axis front plate here, and it is actually 10 by 14 inches, so it's not going to fit on 11 by 17, but, or I mean, excuse me, 8 and a half by 11. But all of these uh, PDF files are designed where you can print them off on just regular 8.5 by 11 paper. Uh, and I know you probably can't see this from way out there, but when you print them off, you select, when you hit print, you, you select the poster, and then you also tell it to put the cut lines. And then you just need to make sure that scale says 100%, because it should be uh, at 100%. And what it will do is it will print this off, and you can see here, uh, you know, just printed this off in like four different pieces of paper. But what you can do is take the cut lines, use either a paper cutter or draw your line, and cut them out with scissors. Uh, you know, paper cutter is easier if you have one. And, you know, basically you're just lining up the little cut lines on the, on the sheet. So you don't need to go to find a print shop to print them out big. I mean, if you want to try to do that, you can. Just make sure they print them out full scale. Um, and, you know, but if, if all you've got is a little printer like I do with eight and a half by 11 paper, this is what you can get. You know, you just line the lines up, uh, take your time taping them together, get them lined up good, and there you go. You've got yourself a good paper template uh, with all the holes. Now, if you're worried about whether or not it's going to be full scale, you know, again, when you go to print, you can look to see that it's going to print out uh, full scale. But another good way to check is to go to your drawing that's showing, for example, this Z-axis front plate. And I can go to this drawing here, and I don't have all the dimensions of the holes or any of that, but you don't need that. All I have is the overalls, and I'm showing that it's 10 inches by 14. So all you have to do is take a tape measure. Once you've got it taped together, uh, I'm gonna cut 10 here. So I've got 10 inches that way, and I've got exactly 14 inches that way. So this makes it really easy because now once you get your paper template taped together, you now have all the holes laid out exactly where they need to be with center marks and everything. So you should be able to get this done very accurately without having to take it to, like I said, a print shop or Kinko's or somewhere else. I know. You know, that was one of the uh, complaints of some people, depending on where they live, they might not have a place that uh, could print them out full scale. So, this is much easier if you got an 8.5 by 11 printer, and pretty much everybody has those. You can get these printed out uh, without any trouble and take together. Okay, for those of you who may not want to take the time to cut all these out and cut the paper and all that stuff, you can order a free cut. Uh, set of parts from from me. Uh, it'll come in a box like this. Uh, it'll have all the parts pre-cut. It'll have little things like uh, where I put little marks just to uh, 
put the suggested hole locations is what I'll call those. Uh, you know, and I also include a screw chart because, you know, like I said, this one is really designed much easier, folks. You can just put it together with wood screws, deck screws, whatever you got laying around. Uh, so these are just to mark the hole locations. When you see this little indentation here, you'll want to check your screw chart, figure out what kind of screw you're going to use, and then drill the appropriate size pilot hole for those screws. So you don't want to just hog out a big screw and then it be real slop or a big hole and then it's real slop. So get the right size pilot screw. Uh, there are, you know, like I said, all the parts here. I'll just show a few things here. Here's one of the uprights. If, there are some advantages to ordering the kits already cut from me. Um, one is, and I hope you can see this, um, I'll maybe move the camera in and get a close up. But okay, I thought I would Try to do a little close-up to show you uh, what I was talking about. There you can see the pocket, and there you can see one where I've got the uh, Acme nut uh, inside the pocket on the little block, and also the block fit into the little pocket on the uh, upright. So, little design features to try to make it easy for the people that want to buy the kits. On these parts I have a little indentation here where to mark the location where the Acme nut block is. And it fits right in there. It's a no-brainer. There's also a couple of places to let you know where to drill the, uh, the pilot holes for your screw. And also you may notice a little, uh, little pocket here on some of the newer kits. Uh, I just started doing this recently. I think the last five or six that I sent out. Uh, had this, I thought I would try to improve it a little bit, make it even easier. So if you got your your Acme nut, it will fit in this pocket, just perfect. And you can put just a little wood screw. If you wanted to drill a through hole, you can put a 632 with a nut on the other side. Uh, however you want to attach it, but that will help keep it, uh, you know, and locate it perfectly there. And that's not only on the smaller uh, blocks. But also, I can find it here. Oh yeah, here it is. On the one that goes across the X too. I've even got one there. So makes it really easy. And that, like I said, that's one advantage. Now, if you're cutting these parts out yourself, uh, some of these features, like these pockets and things like that. Here's one for the bearing. They'll be, uh, you know, they may be on the drawings, but you probably won't want to take the time to do the pocket unless you got. Round, it's okay, you got a forced a bit, but you're not going to have anything to be able to make this shape without uh, a lot of work. So, uh, you probably just want to uh, make just the through hole and do it that way. Uh, like I said, everything in your kit is already done. I've already thought a lot of this stuff out for you. This router mount, uh, you know, is made to put, you can either put a nut there. Uh, here's something that I uh, found that I like to use. If you take these little bitty weld nut tabs, uh, you can stick those in there, and then at, after you drill your hole, you've got something to pull to them because there's this is just long enough, it won't turn. You know, sometimes if you put a nut, you press it in there, you're okay, but after a while, it may loosen up and turn. So these are even a little easier. And I've done the same kind of thing on the. Where did I put it? Right here, I've got these little, uh, you'll notice in the drawings, these look like little rectangles, but of course when I cut them out with a round bit, uh, they're going to be like little oval slots. So you can do a couple of things, and, I, and I'll share with you something that I've done on the, the big green one that I did in there. Uh, I actually just drilled a hole, you know, in line here, and then drilled the hole like I was going to use a quarter 20 so I drilled the hole for a 201 which is the tap size hole that you drill if you're going to tap it and then I just took a quarter 20 tap and actually tapped the wood and you know was able to put a bolt in there to use to push that B group bearing up and it worked quite well um, you may if you want to do that you may even want to leave this hole out when you're when you're making these parts uh, they give you a lot more to tap to. 
Uh, but it, I guarantee you when you tap it though, you're going to need a wrench to put it in there because it's a really tight fit. But it works well because you, you don't want it backing out and uh, it, it works really good. Okay, I guess that's going to do it for this first video. I'm just going to uh, keep it short here. Uh, here is the uh, Z-axis front plate uh, that I was talking about earlier. And like I said, you can take this pattern and lay it on there and see that it matches perfect. So paper templates, an easy way to go, and you don't have to uh, don't have to go somewhere to get them made or, or printed out. You can just do it with your eight and a half by eleven printer. So. That's going to do it. I'm getting ready to start my build. I've got to make a trip to uh, Home Depot. If anybody's wondering, what I'm using to cut these is uh, the plywood I get is from Home Depot. Uh, it's called uh, 3 quarter inch Birch Pure Bond. It's made here in the U.S. and I found it to be much better quality than what I could find at Lowe's or uh, you know someplace like that. I have a Lowe's and a Home Depot both really close to me. And, uh, you know, this, this is really nice stuff. Very seldom will you find a void in it. If you do, it's usually very small. Uh, but as you can see all the way around this, there's not a void anywhere. It's very solid. Even when I look in the slots and all that, all the holes, no voids in this at all. So really pleased with uh, this, type, this kind of plywood and being able to get it, uh, you know, Home Depot is probably five miles from my house or something like that. So. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Um, like I said, I've got to make a run to get some material, and I'll start doing this build. Uh, we'll go ahead and call this uh, part one, I guess, of this build series. Um, and stay tuned for probably at least three, four, maybe five more videos. I don't know. We'll just see how long it takes. Uh, I'm probably going to build this first one um, exactly to the plans. I thought about building it bigger, but I think I'm going to build this first one exactly to the plans and then maybe uh, maybe I'll do a giveaway on it or something later on. So anyway, I appreciate all my new subscribers. Thanks for watching. Thank you all for buying the plans and the kits. I uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, I guess that's going to do it for this video. So we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.